Hey everybody, Sean Tubbs here. Thanks for tuning in. I've had a lot of requests to do a studio tour. And quite frankly, I've been really reluctant to, mainly because I don't use a lot of outboard equipment. I don't have a lot of uh, just things to show you, to be quite honest with you. And also, um, I'm planning on changing all this stuff out. I wanna switch over from Apogee to UA Audio. Um, my computer's getting older, I need to get that upgraded, but I honestly don't know when I'm going to do that. So I thought, well, I might as well just go ahead and give you guys a rundown of my room and, and let you have some insight into how I work, how I set up my stuff, um, and just my general uh, workflow. So I guess first things first would be to talk about the room uh, itself. This is basically the mother-in-law suite in my house. So essentially it's a smaller master bedroom. So it has a walk-in closet, which became uh, ideal for my speaker cab room. And it also has a bathroom attached, uh, which actually works out great too, because I can mic up uh, cabinets in there if I wanna have some really ambient sounding guitars. And of course the bathtub is actually full of guitar cases. And my wife has just been over the moon about that. Hmm. Anyways, uh, so that's the room. Um, and I think what I'll try and do is I'll, I'll just kind of get behind the camera and as best I can without making you guys throw up, just kind of pan around the room and let you uh, get a feel for it, especially if you want to play cowbell. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, I think I'll start with my desk, the furniture, the gear that's on it, and then we'll just kind of go from there. We can talk about the, uh, the amp rack. Um, and we can talk about the control room and the mics I use and, and all that stuff. So let's get started. Okay, so what I thought I would do is give you guys a quick uh, just overview of just the, the room, just kind of a walkthrough. So right now I'm in my hallway. That's why it's so reflective in here. But uh, right here is the door to my studio. So I'll go ahead and get behind the camera and I'll just walk in and let you guys check it out from my perspective. Okay, so as we enter the room... If you pan to the left, or I'm actually panning to the left, uh, there's my world. So that's my desk, you know, computer, all the stuff I work with. There's my amps. Got some guitars on the wall. Got one in a stand down there. And then this is the speaker room, and we'll check that out. And then there's another guitar on the wall. I'm just kind of panning around. Hopefully I won't make you guys barf. Okay, uh, we're on the back wall. Now you guys don't see this as often because I don't usually do shots from this angle. But those are all my guitars, or the majority of them. I normally had them down on the ground. But the problem was uh, I had them in a guitar boat. And I just run out of room. You know, you can see I've got a tripod there with a camera on it. I was just kicking tripods over into the guitars. They were getting bumped and nicked. And I thought, man, I gotta get these up off the floor. So I ended up hanging them on the wall. I prefer not to do that, but I need to have them out for workflow so I can just get at them. I can't be digging around through cases and things like that. So that's where they ended up and it, it works fine. And uh, by the way, the treatment that you're seeing on the walls, that's all primacoustic that I bought. Um, I probably should have made it, to be honest with you. It's so expensive, but it does work really well. There's some behind the uh, the desk. And then if up here, I made my own cloud just to stop reflections. It's the same pieces you see here. I just kind of hung them all together to uh, get rid of some reflections from up there. Okay, so that's the room. I can go through this door. Now, this is the bathroom, so it's like, it's kind of who cares. But what's actually funny is that... That's my uh, storage for a lot of my guitar cases. Not all of them, but they've ended up in the in the bathtub, and my wife just thought that was such a fabulous idea. I do uh, mic things up in here, though, for ambient stuff, and it sounds killer. You always know there's a YouTuber around when he's got his battery chargers in the bathroom. Ta-da! So that's uh, a general tour of the room. I don't know if you saw that down there. That's a uh, PT-100 that I just got done demoing uh, for Sir. That's a fabulous amp. But uh, it's just sitting down there waiting to, uh, to head back to the factory, though I'm secretly hoping they've kind of forgotten about it for a while. 
probably not. And there's my poor lonely bass guitar. I'm a terrible bass player, but yeah, that's just a Fender Mexican jazz bass. It works fine. Uh, oh, and in case anybody does uh, wonder, I use Canon EOS 70D cameras. I'm obviously, as you can tell, not a cinematographer. Um, I can get decent clear shots with them. I'm just using the kit lenses. I think this one is, uh, I think it's a 18 to 55. And then the camera I'm holding is the same exact camera, but it has uh, a wide angle lens on it. And that's, you know, what I use for all of my shots of me playing. Uh, this camera gets used for all the inset shots. So close-ups on amps, pedals, close-ups on my hands. Um, I generally have them both running at the same time. So that's that's what that is. And then these lights I just bought on Amazon. They're just cheap LED lights and they serve the purpose uh, for, for what I'm doing. So there you go. That is, uh, that's my room. Okay, so let's start with the desk and then we'll kind of move on from there. So here we go. I'm going to get behind the camera here. Okay, so what you're looking at is my world. Uh, I'll start by just talking about the, the desk itself. That is literally an office desk from Target. And I can't remember the model, I just remember it was cheap. And the reason I went that way was I already had these, uh, these four space racks from Raxess. They were like 90 bucks a, a hit. I got them from uh, Sweetwater. And I figured since I already had those laying around and they were going to end up being perfect monitor stands anyways, why not just get a regular office desk? So that's what I did. It's worked out great. I mean, eventually I'll probably, you know, upgrade to a regular studio desk, but for now it works fine. Let's start with uh, my interface. The interface I use is an Apogee Quartet. It works great. I've had it for a really long time. Um, I haven't really had any issues uh, with it. I think I am gonna switch over to UA Audio. Um, I was really impressed uh, when I did a demo of the UA uh, Ox Top box. And uh, ever since then, I've been thinking about just going completely UA. But I, I will say the Apogee's been good. I don't need a lot of inputs and outputs. I just use one uh, mic preamp that's stereo. And then, of course, my Ox has an output. So I, I really only need uh, three uh, line or mic inputs. Uh, this one has four. Um, I've got multiple outputs, but even then I don't need that many. I just basically route to my monitors and that's and that's it. But yeah, it's been good. It works fine. And then the computer I'm using is older. This is a mid-2012 iMac. So she's getting a little up there, um, but it, it's hanging in there. Every once in a while it'll have a meltdown and kind of quit on me. But uh, truth be told, when I do upgrade, I'm going to stick with the iMac. It's just been an excellent uh, format, especially for uh, Pro Tools. I'm using uh, Pro Tools 12 point, 12 point, who cares? Um, but I'm using, <laughs> I'm using Pro Tools, and you know that's, that's a format I've used for years, and I'll never switch just because I know it. Um, so anyways, I'll stick with iMac, but I'll eventually upgrade. Uh, right next to that is my iPad. The only thing I use that for is the software app on my, uh, my UA Audio Aux box. And I love it because it's Wi-Fi, so it's not connected to anything. So if I'm doing tweaks on my amps over here, I can just take that with me. And while I'm dialing things in, if I need to do a subtle mic change, I'm, you know, good to go because the thing's right next to me. And once again, it's, it's, it's all uh, workflow. Um, below that, just real quick, that's just a, a rack drawer. And I just keep all kinds of crap in there from screwdrivers to my in-air case. Um, I've got my hidden coffee crisp candy bars. I got guitar picks in there, wrench set. I've got slides and nail files, just general junk uh, that I need while I'm working. That's all that is. This is just a generic uh, power strip. It's, it's whatever, you know, you plug things into it and they get electrified. Okay, uh, let's move over to here now. The first thing I want to talk about outboard equipment wise is my uh, Chandler Limited uh, TG2 mic preamp. I bought that guy in uh, 2006 and it's just been one of the best purchases I could have ever made. What I love about it is it's a very open sounding mic preamp. It doesn't argue with any microphones, condenser, ribbon, you name it. It's perfectly fine with them. 
Um, what goes in is what comes out. I don't want anything massively colored. Um, it's not going to fix anything that sounds like crap, but it's not going to hurt anything that sounds amazing. Um, and, and, and that's what I want. I don't really need EQ. Um, I think at some point I would like to maybe get, you know, a 1073 style preamp, which would be more of a British style, mainly because I like those uh, EQs, like a Neve 1073 EQ. But that would just be for me, uh, especially when I'm uh, recording acoustic guitars, I'd like to be able to use EQ. But for the most part, I don't like to mess with the source. Um, if it's not right, then I'll change the amp or guitar or move the microphones or change the mics. But that's the only preamp I use. Um, and it's, it's like I said, it just sounds uh, stellar. Now below that is my Ampeat amp switcher. And that's been another really invaluable uh, purchase. It, it's once again, it's, it's all about workflow for me. So this guy allows me to switch between up to eight amplifiers and eight speaker cabinets. And I have done a demo of that if you want to check it out. Right now I've got it set up to switch between six amps. Actually, it's going to be set up to switch between seven. I've got an amp in the speaker room that I want to be able to route to as well. But as you can see, like right now I've got, there's my finger, right there, I've got, uh, in, on the cab side, I've got the, the number three button pushed. And what that's doing is turning on the aux. So anything coming into that will route to the aux. Now, I've got two cabinets that I use in the uh, cabinet room. And those are one and two, depending on which one I want to use. And then, of course, I can choose... Uh, whatever I want over here really quickly. So yeah, there's no getting up and unplugging cables and speaker cables. Um, I can just keep working, get a tone up quick and, and just keep moving along. So that thing has just been absolutely invaluable. Now above that, these are my monitors. Now I haven't had these very long, these KRKs. They are fabulous sounding monitors. Um, before I got those, I had a really old set of Event 2020 powered monitors. Had them for years. And uh, they, they were great. Uh, I mean, I liked them because they, uh, I was used to them. I knew how they sounded. But a buddy of mine finally convinced me to uh, try these KRKs out. And what sold me was the mid-range content on them, especially when I soloed up my guitar tracks in Pro Tools. I was just hearing things in the mids that I just had never heard on my other monitors. Um, the low end is really tight on them. Uh, the, the, the top end is smooth. It's not overhyped, which I really appreciate. Now, I'm not a mix or monitor engineer. It's, it's kind of whatever. So for me, it was more listening from a guitar player perspective, and they were just a, a fabulous fit. So I'm, I'm really happy with those. Those are going to be there for the long term. And speaking of speakers in the room, um, those two cabinets right there are actually not just there to get the, uh, the aux box up in the air. If I do happen to route to the universal aux, I can also turn on cabinets in the room if I want. So it's, it's, it's really nice. I can just go here to speaker volume. I can turn that up and then I can decide, do I want to listen to a closed back Sir cab or my open back Sir Bella cab in the room? So that's why those guys are out here if I just want to sit and play. Or sometimes I actually want an ambient mic in the room when I, you know, it's all kinds of weird stuff that I'll do. I'll put a microphone in the bathroom but play through this cabinet just to get, you know, tweaky sounds. Um, but those, those are great out here and that's just another benefit of having the aux box. Now above that is a Sur Reactive load box and that thing works great. And what I'll use that for is when I want to use third party IRs. Um, I'll run that into, you know, my Pro Tools rig using, you know, Walla Sound or Mix IR or whatever, just so I can check out uh, IRs. Like, I really love the Celestian IRs. I wanted to check them out. So I, I can route, same thing, I'll route from here to the, uh, the reactive load and then into... Uh, Pro Tools and I can listen to any amp I want through that. So that's why that's there. Uh, they both uh, serve uh, a really uh, great purpose. Let's move on to my, uh, my amps. Let's talk about the, uh, the actual amp shelf. I built that. Um, I bought all the parts from Home Depot. It's a pipe and flange shelf. So I bought the piping. It's 14 inch piping. It's an inch thick uh, with the flange. It's threaded pipes. Um, I bought the boards from Home Depot. I had them cut them to length for me, and then I just brought them home and stained them. 
and basically just screwed it all together. You can see I just used wood screws on those flanges down there. And it's it's been great. And it was so much cheaper than trying to buy something that would work. And it is on casters. And the reason it's on casters is I can pull it towards me. So if I'm working over here and I don't want to have to move over here to, uh, to change a setting, I'll actually just pull that whole thing towards me. So it's very ergonomic. It works, it works really great. Now amp-wise, I've got six amps sitting here and they all just kind of serve different purposes. Um, I, I love every single one of them. They feel different. I think eventually I'll do a, uh, a run through of, of kind of how I use all these amplifiers. But you know, the, the Hedgehog has its own just really rich, super um, complex sounding clean. It's got a really cool overdrive, but I tend to use it for semi-broken tones. Right next to it is my uh, Badger 35. That's more of a Vox AC30 uh, meets kind of Marshall uh, tone. And I do crunch tones on that mainly, but I do every once in a while use it for more of the straight up uh, Vox chimey tone. And then right below that is my Sir Bella, which you guys will have heard the most. Now I have demoed the Badger and the uh, Hedgehog. The Bella I use uh, because it's such an excellent sounding clean amp um, and it just takes pedals really well. Um, so you guys have heard that amplifier quite a bit. Right next to that is my Red Plate uh, Blues Machine. That's more of a tweed style amp. You can get black face type tones out of it, but what I use it for is to get kind of crunchier uh, tweed style old school Fender tones. Below that is my Rev uh, Generator 740. Really great amp. Now I do use that for more high gain stuff, though I do uh, really like the green channel, which is kind of the crunch channel. And then the, the uh, and I've demoed that amp as well. Um, that one has a really beautiful clean as well, but generally when I turn it on, I'm, I'm wanting to use the high gain channel. And then right next to that is my ultimate uh, crunch amp, just thick crunch tones. And that's my uh, Friedman Dirty Shirley and that amp has been uh, fabulous. And then here is my pedal board. You guys have seen this before. Um, I haven't changed it, and that's why you haven't seen me do a pedal board demo in a long time. I'm eventually going to rebuild it. Um, things go on and off, you know, every once in a while I'll take the Blue Note off and I'll put an Archer on. I'll take the 45 off and I'll put a GTO there or maybe a different high gain pedal. I will say that what stays on this board or what this board tends to revolve around is the Petty John Chime and my Majestic. Um, everything kind of revolves around those pedals. You know, I'll, I'll change out compressors. I've got a Koji comp on there right now. It sounds great. The Strymon and the Flint are fabulous. Those will stay on there. But I am uh, conceptualizing a new board and I'll eventually build it. And when I do, I'll, uh, I'll do a demo of it so you guys can check it out. But yeah, that's, that's my pedal board just kind of sitting there. and. There's one of my, my SIRs in a stand. Let me go into the speaker room. Now, this is just a walk-in closet, and what I ended up doing is I lined it with mineral wool. So I'll just pan up real quick. It's lined from the ceiling to the floor in mineral wool. It's two inches thick. It worked amazing. It was cheap, and then all I did was just put fabric over it. So you can kind of see where I ran out of fabric down there. You can see the yellow mineral wool. That's all that is. Um, now this room also gets used to store all my uh, stomp boxes and straps and just all kinds of junk. Um, well, this isn't junk. Those are all my microphones, my Royers, and I've got a Vanguard and 57. I keep them all in there. Um, Here's my speaker cabinets. So the one I use the most, and sorry the light's kind of dim in here, but the one I tend to use the most is my Bogner 2x12 close back, and that guy's got Selly V30s in it. And you can see the mics that I'm using are my tried and true Royer 121 and Shure SM57. Um, I've been using that combination for years and I don't plan on changing. So you guys have heard this cabinet the most. The cabinet above it, is my red plate uh, cabinet. It's an open back 1x12. Sounds amazing. Um, it's got a Selly cream back in it, uh, the 65 watt. And I'll mic that up when I need a more open top end. Um, 
uh, kind of a more complex top end just sounds uh, fabulous uh, for tracking. I really like that cabinet. Right next to that is my Sur closed back cabinet. That's got a V30 in it as well. Um, I tend to take that one out. I don't uh, mic it up as much, um, but I do uh, love the way it sounds uh, in, a, in a room. Um, it's compact, it's big sounding, it's got a real tight low end. Um, so it's it's been a great cabinet. Below that, that's just a, a chest of drawers. So, I mean, kind of the same thing. I've got uh, strings and uh, tools. But anyways, that's the uh, that's my walk-in closet that I converted into uh, my speaker room. And it, it just it worked out perfectly. Now, down here, this is my glyph drive. And that's why I didn't bring it up out there. This is where basically all my data goes. Now, what's really, really stupid... And the reason it's in here is it's got a fan. And the fan is a little too noisy for me. It just drove me nuts. So I thought, well, I'll remedy that. I'll just get a longer cable and, and put it in with the speakers. And then what happened is I realized when I play really loud, it shakes the crap out of that thing. And then the computer thinks it's not seeing the data and shuts everything down. So what I ended up doing was taking this pedal board case, it's a cover for the case, and using it to just block... Uh, sound waves from hitting this guy so hard and then I've got it sitting on foam and it works perfectly but in all honesty that is just dumb so eventually I'll you know I'll get an SSD drive or something that it doesn't need a fan and, and get it back out there but I will say that drive is plenty fast it's a four terabyte um, it's it's been great I just can't deal with that fan and, and I, I feel totally embarrassed that it's in here like that but it is what it is it's been working <laughs> okay let's head back out here Okay, so that is my studio. If you've got any questions, if I missed something, please post them in the comment section below and I'll do the very best I can to, uh, to answer them. And as always, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and we will see you next time.